Spurge here, and on the table today, we have the new Schuberth C5 helmet. Now, this is gonna be the new top-of-the-line helmet within Schuberth's line. It is replacing the outgoing C4. The C4 was a helmet that we weren't overly impressed with for its $650 price tag. The new C5 coming in around $750 is much more in line with what we expect from Schuberth. For those of you that are new to the brand, Schuberth is a premium modular designed helmet really aiming at that touring audience. And when we say modular design, just so everyone knows what we're talking about, this is a helmet where the chin bar can flip up when you come to a rest stop so you can take a drink, you can smoke a cigarette. Not that we're promoting smoking. Kids, if you're watching this video, it's not a healthy habit. Don't start. Um, but for those of you out there that are touring that like the idea of having that modular design, this is gonna be something that has become known as you know really the premium leader in the world of modular helmets. That's the reputation that Schuberth has. And a lot of it comes from the fact that they claim an 85 decibel noise level inside the helmet from wind noise, and that's through wind tunnel testing. So they do claim that their modular design is one of the quietest helmets out there. Audio noise, however, inside a helmet is very subjective. So really, results may vary depending on what your threshold of quiet might be. Now, the shell on this is going to be a DFP construction that stands for direct fiber processing. This allows Schuberth to lay thicker strands in an area where they want more reinforcement and more protection, less strands in areas that are less subjective to impact, and this allows them to keep the weight down. About three pounds, 15 ounces in a large, and really when we're talking about a modular helmet, it's a relatively lightweight design, um, especially considering all the aerodynamics that Schubert has in included and integrated into this helmet. The little wings up front, the turbulators at the top of the face shield, all work to help the helmet feel very stable and lightweight at speed. So along with the three pounds, 15 ounces, um, it is gonna be you know, designed aerodynamically to keep that helmet feeling very balanced. It's also important to note, and we'll get into this a little bit more in detail in a minute, but when we're talking about that three pounds, 15 ounces, this helmet already has speakers and an antenna built in for the comm system. So that's gonna add a little bit to the weight there as well, which you wouldn't get with the helmet that has already had the speakers built in. Two shell sizes, five different EPS liners. You're gonna have the, uh, the shell sizes range from an extra small up to a large, and then the larger shell is gonna be from an extra large up to a 3XL. We'll get into the liner in just a minute, um, but it is important to note that when we're talking about the interior shape on this, it is gonna be able to be fine-tuned. So this is going to be an intermediate oval design. In the past, Schuberts have tended to run a little bit on the round side. Um, this is gonna be intermediate oval. A little bit longer front to back, slightly narrow on the side of the head. Going to work for the majority of riders out there in the American audience. However, with the interior for this, it is a seven-piece interior that you can mix and match, and you have the different kits that you can get to actually make the helmet fit a little bit more long oval or a little bit rounder, depending on your head shape. So there's a lot of fine-tuning you can do with the fit on this helmet, and that's extremely important for your comfort seeking touring riders out there that are spending long miles in the saddle that don't want to have to worry about any ill-fitting points, you can fine-tune all of that once we get to the inside. Now, it's going to be DOT only, and you're going to have three intake vents and then one exhaust vent. So when we're looking at the back, the exhaust vent on this is passive. There is no way to open or close that. And then when we get to the front, you're going to have an intake vent at the top of the head. You're going to have an intake vent down at the bottom. And then you're going to have one little vent that actually just vents right to the face shield. Now, my only nitpick here, to start off with a, you know, a nitpick, um, is that you know the vents feel a little bit cheap in their construction. They actuate perfectly. You have a, uh, a fully closed, a halfway, and then an open. It just feels like the little switches are kind of out of place um, with, with the quality of this particular helmet. And the, you'll see on the front one, you either have an open or closed. You don't have the three different positions on the top. You just have the two positions down front. Now, taking a look at the rest of this. So let's start by talking about the face shield itself. Like I said earlier, you have the little turbulators on here. It is a pin lock ready face shield with a pin lock included in the box. And then when we wanna get this off, one of the things that I really like about this is it's a super simple design. You open the face shield, you pull it back towards you, and you simply pull these little tabs up and then it pops right off. You just roll it backwards and it pops right off as you roll it backwards. And then to get it back on, you just simply push this in place and you roll it back down. So when we're taking a look at this particular lid, the other thing that I like about this 
is that the face shield itself, depending on the setting you have it in, sticks, there's a memory to it, depending on how you open the chin bar. So if you have your face shield open and you open the chin bar for a modular ride, and then you go ahead and you close the chin bar, face shield stays open. If you have it in the closed position, you can open it, you can close it, and it stays in the closed position. The only note here is if you have this opened up all the way and it's in that, that fully locked position, and you go up and you bring it back down, it does actually pull it down a little bit, so it doesn't truly stay up in that full position. And that's because my other little nitpick here is that the detents could be a little bit stronger. You've got multiple positions of detents, but not quite as, uh, as firm as I would like to see for someone that sometimes likes to keep my helmet cracked a little bit to allow airflow to come through. Um, as we're taking a look through the front of the helmet and around to the side, you are going to have a little slider over on the left hand side, which is for your drop down internal sun visor. And then you'll also notice right behind that is going to be where you can add your SC2 comm system. So this is going to be an upgrade over the previous generation comms from Schubert. Now they've partnered with Cena, so their SC2 system is the same equivalent as the technology you'd find in a 50S or a 50R. So this is going to give you that full mesh technology. Now if you want all the nitty gritty as to what this is going to give you, make sure you check out our video on the, uh, the SC2 or the 50S or 50R from Cena. It's going to give you the same features, um, but really what you're talking about is a mesh comm system. That means you can connect to 24 riders in private mode. You can go unlimited in open mode. You have 1.2 miles of connectivity in between riders, and you can go up to a five mile range uh, depending on how many riders you have in the chain. You can still connect via Bluetooth up to four riders. There's going to be an app associated with this. Um, there's going to be high quality speakers that are already built in, so really you just have to plug the unit in and go. For those of you that already have a separate comm system and you don't want to use the SC2, the beauty of this generation over the C4, the C4, those helmet speakers were locked into place. You had to cut them out if you wanted them out there. Um, the speakers in this one, you can unplug and take out and then run a comm system that you already have in with this helmet as well. You just don't get the, 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 the you know, wind noise reduction. The whole idea of this system is that it actually integrates a little bit into the helmet so you don't have that wind resistance pushing on the side of the head. Like I said, the antenna for the system is already built in. You can't remove the antenna. The antenna actually runs in between the EPS liner and the outer shell uh, in the top of the helmet, but you can unplug the speakers, which is a nice upgrade over the C4, which really you had those speakers that were stuck in there, and if you didn't want to use Schubert's system, you were kind of you were kind of out of luck. But I like the fact that they upgraded the ST SC2 system. Now going to have that mesh technology, and it is just a much nicer system than what we previously experienced with the Bluetooth setup. On the back, this is where your battery pack would go. So the brains of the comm system live in the back, and then your controller lives over here on the side. From a uh, from a interior perspective, we're now going to move to the inside on this. And really what I want to do is we're going to open this up first and foremost, and we'll take a look at the inside. So just actually before I pull that little donut out here, just taking a look at the uh, the top part of this, the, this is going to be two parts of the chin curtain. The, the top part that's actually baked into the shell is not going to be removable. And then the actual chin curtain right here at the front can be pulled out if you want. And that's just going to have a little Velcro strip at the front. Uh, really actually easy to use, easy to get in, easy to get out, stays in place. And normally I'm not a huge fan of chin curtains. This one doesn't get in my way too much. And keeping in mind for those of you out there that are trying to get that full 85 decibels of noise reduction inside your helmet, all of this little you know, accoutrements, if you will, is how Schubert is able to cut that down. So make sure you're using the chin curtain if you are trying to get the quietest experience out of your new Schubert C5. Now, taking a look at the interior, you are going to have that quick ratchet strap release. This is something that we're kind of used to from Schubert at this point in time. The other piece that you're going to notice here is that you are going to have a new interior with this. This is going to be Okatex technology. That is the material being used in the, uh, in the liner itself. And it is going to uh, have a seven part design, which is atypical of what we would typically find in a helmet setup. Typically there's you know, two cheek pads and, an, and a liner. This is going to have seven different pieces that you need to remove. And it's also going to notice when we get through this, there is going to be their ROS system, their anti-roll-off system. 
which just helps to keep everything in place when you're riding. If you are in an accident, you can see right here, it's this strip of ribbon that kind of holds everything together and it really just helps the helmet stay in place so you don't have to worry about it rolling off in an unfortunate accident. But as we pull these cheek pads out, you're gonna see, we'll get these out, there's gonna be cheek pads, a neck roll, and then all of this, like we talked about earlier, is going to be uh, fine tunable. So you can actually change the pads and all of this stuff and you can see as I'm pulling this off, the, the uh, RO system actually kind of Velcros up under here. You can add pads in, you can take pads off, um, and then you're gonna see it's kind of already connecting. So all these little pieces connect to itself as you pull it out. And you're gonna see as we start to rip all this stuff out, a lot of different little pieces that all kind of connect together. What I will say is I was actually kind of nervous about how complicated this was gonna to be to figure out, but all the little snaps make this extremely easy to find out where it belongs. You can see the measurements written down, and then if you want something to be thicker or thinner, you can just go with the next size in this, and it's all gonna be, again, fine tunable uh, for your particular head shape. Get this last little two pieces out of here on the side. We'll take a look at the inside. So we've got one, two, as far as our cheek pads go, three, four, five, six, and then the seventh one is gonna be the neck roll. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that in for the time being, but if you wanted to, that just pulls out as well. Taking a look at the inside, you're gonna see we already have those speakers that are installed down there in the shell. They run in very comfortably. They're already recessed into the shell, so not any kind of discomfort to be seen. You're gonna see a nice channel cutout for those vents working through, and then all those snap points for the liner on the inside. So once you get uh, used to putting the liner in and out, it's very simple to use and everything snaps into the shell. I was a little bit concerned with being able to feel those snaps as pressure points. You know, one of the things that I will note is that I wasn't able to really feel any noticeable discomfort with that, but depending on, you know, the length of your hair or how tight you're wearing your helmet or what pad setup you're going with, um, those little snaps might be a concern for certain people depending on how they're using the helmet and how they have it configured. Just a quick note there. My final little nitpick with this helmet is as always, Schubert decided to put in this giant warning tag that's actually sewn into the shell. Now you can tuck this up underneath the cheek pad, but if you're not careful, it ends up flapping around down below the helmet. I'm not going to tell you to grab an X-Acto knife and cut this out, but I am gonna say that if you wanted to grab an X-Acto knife and cut this out, uh, that would prevent it from actually sneaking out from behind the cheek pad and flapping around. Um, but just a note here that uh, Schuber said that this is a requirement you know, from a, from a lawyer perspective, from a safety perspective, to let people know whatever this warning says is on here. But for me, uh, I, I do find that that's a bit distracting uh, if it does start to sneak out from the, uh, from the bottom of the cheek pad. So just a quick little note there, and again, ratchet strap holds this in place. Ratchet straps are either love them or hate them. There's some people that really truly believe in a, in a double D-ring design. Other people like the convenience of a ratchet strap. Uh, I'm not here to tell you which one is right, but I am just here to point out that this is gonna be that ratchet strap closure. So that is gonna wrap up the Schubert C5. Again, this is a completely upgraded helmet over the outgoing C4. The C4 was something that, you know, was a little bit of a question mark in Schuberth's design. I don't necessarily think it was up to the, you know, the quality that we've come to see from Schuberth in the past. I was actually really excited to see what they did with the C5 because it really does harken back to some of the, some of the higher end Schuberth C3, C3 Pros um, that we've seen from the brand in years gone by. Now there's a lot of people out there that like using modular helmets. They really do stand behind the Shoeberth brand. And if you want to hear more what those riders have to say, you can always click the info button on your desktop or mobile device, which will allow you to read other rider reviews from folks that are already rocking a Shoeberth C5 on their ride. If you're not sure as to which modular helmet is right for you in your touring setup, you can always reach out to one of our customer service representatives. They can walk you through all the different helmet options available to make sure that you find the right helmet for your riding style. I want to thank you for joining us for this look at the Schubert C5 helmet. I'm Spurge. Enjoy the ride.